Well, today is a day. That's the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. No, I'm just kidding. So today's video is a long time in the making. When I first got into fountain pens, I think this probably goes for a lot of people. The fountain pen that's seen as like the best or most prestigious is a Mont Blanc. And uh, you know, whether it is or not as debated, I, I honestly don't think it's the best. I, it depends on what you're looking for. If you want a pen just to be pretty and have the most recognition in your pocket, uh, yeah, that's going to be a great choice. If you want a pen with the best writing experience for you, it very well could be the worst choice for you. Or maybe not the worst, but certainly not the best, you know, depending on what you want. Um, you know, you can get a $30 fountain pen that'll write better for you, you know? It's all what you want. So this pen sleeve has become home to my two most expensive and probably two top five favorite looking pens. I, it's hard to rank. So, you know, we got my Pelican. This was supposed to be my last pen for a long time after how much money I spent on it. Um, and it looks like there's ink in the P. I'll have to get that later. Um, yeah, gorgeous pen. Love this pen. Have it inked with Takesumi, however you say it. And of course, this glossy pen is always just gets so grungy with dead skin cells. It's gross. And you know what? I'm tired of pretending it's not because it, it just happens. Okay. I clean my hands. I wash my hands every time I'm in the bathroom. I'm not that dirty of a person. I'm like average level dirty. Okay. I think this just happens for everyone. Cause it's just, that's just how like glossy plastic is. It's like when people complain about piano black um, trim and cars. It's the same thing. It just gets fingerprints everywhere and it gets all grungy and gross. So anyway, I got an all glossy piano black pen. <laughs> I got the Mont Blanc. Um, you can see it's got a bit of scratching. It is in better condition than it looks like in the eBay pictures. On eBay, it looked like this bottom end was just scuffed to hell, but it was just some dried gunk on it. I scratched off. But this is not a 146, it's a 147 Traveler. So instead of having the piston filler like the 146, it takes cartridges. And you can put two cartridges in the pen. It takes international standard short. And here's the nib. Let me compare it to the Pelican because I think this is the second biggest nib I have. Um, gold wise. Uh, cause I do have some pretty chonky, uh, steel nibs like the bent Jinhao and the Moon Man. That's a pretty big nib. Let's compare those. This is a Yovo 6 nib compared to the Mont Blanc. Still somehow have a good a bit good amount of ink in the Waterman with that bent nib, although I haven't been using it as much lately. Just, I have a ton of pens inked, it's hard to get to them all, but this pen, it's great. It's in better condition than I thought, like I said. Um, it's pretty comfortable. I like the size for me, unposted. I, I think I use every single one of my pens unposted. Um, so this is a good size. I like a, a pin that's big unposted, you know, like the M800 would probably be a good size pin for me unposted. This is a pretty good pin and I like how thick the grip is. And it's pretty light, definitely lighter than like a Lamy 2000, which is pretty heavy. That's about as heavy as I like to go. Um, but it does help that it's like balanced really well. But the one thing I'm still having a problem with with this pen is I'm having some minor hard start issues. It was particularly worse when I got the pen. Um, it was pretty bad. I mean, not terrible. It was really annoying. So what would happen is 
I would go to right. Let's see if it'll do it now. Yeah, you can see like when I do that first initial stroke, it struggles. At first it was a lot worse in that regard. Like it took a, a couple little scribbles. Um, but then I cleaned it, I've cleaned it multiple times. I let it soak in warm water for 30 minutes, cleaned it again. Um, but the thing is after that initial hard start, it would write beautifully. So it makes me think it's not the feed, it makes me think it's the nib itself. And when you look at it, the tines are pretty dang close. I mean, they're pretty much touching from, I'm trying to get from like here down, they're pretty much touching. Um, so I tried to separate them a little bit. That helped, I got a little piece of fuzz in there. Um, and I've taken a look at it with the loop and I don't think there's a baby's bottom. Although when I did get the pin, the tines were a little bit misaligned. I think the, this side was higher, I think. No, it was lower. So I'm guessing the person that had it before wrote instead of just flat on the page, I think they wrote a little twisted. Um, but it still writes wonderfully. So it kind of makes me think maybe I have a minor baby's bottom or like, slightly drying out maybe the tines are a little too close i think the feed is good because when i did wash it when i first got it no ink came out which either means the last person cleaned it really well um it was never used or the old ink was just so dry that it didn't want to come out um i think it's that first option but see i've just been sitting here with it open for a little bit so let's see if it'll write yeah, see, it took a couple of scribbles. But then once it gets going, it's wonderful. So it's hard to say. Um, I did have it originally inked up with a Kaweco cartridge, and that kind of sucked. It was a bit too dry, and uh, I didn't like the color. So I put Diamine Writer's Blood in one of the cartridges, and that was too wet. Like, I've, it's the only time I've ever used a fountain pen and been like, whoa, this ink is too wet for this pen right now. It was absurd. Um, but it did help with the hard starting. It still would have that minor, like, first tiny stroke would hard start, and then it was great. Um, but then I did buy some diamine cartridges. Let me go ahead and grab those. I got the mix set from Jet Pins. Comes with two blue black, two emerald, two turquoise, two royal blue, two claret, and I thought it came with Monaco red as well. Oh, there we go. Imperial purple, maroon, jet black, warm brown, and Monaco red. So, lots of pins. Um, yeah, I mean, lots of ink cartridges. That's perfect. Um, also, the Kaweco cartridges didn't quite fit in the pen. I don't really want to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and take out the cartridge. So I currently have, let's see if I can prop you guys up. Uh, it's hard to do one handed. So I currently have Diamine Blue back Black in here. So let me pop out this cartridge. You can see that required a little bit of force. See a little bit of ink pulled up there at the bottom, at the top, that's fine. Also the cartridge looks a little mangled. I don't know if you can kind of see that. Um, but then down here I have a Kaweco cartridge. So if I try to put that in there, it like goes in there with no force and it wiggles around and I would notice when I was using the Kaweco cart I would take this section out and then it would be kind of in at an angle not properly seated but the diamine cartridge fits in there and then I don't know if you heard that little snap it snaps in place it's in there good so let me go ahead and put that back in 
So that's the little section for the cartridges, really neat. Um, this ink I'm using, like I said, diamine blue, black. The little sticker came off of the cartridge bottom. Um, I'm actually not a fan of blue black normally, but I'm really enjoying it here. No, of course you can't see. It's actually writing wetter since I popped out the cartridge and popped it back in. Okay, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, not normally a fan of blue black. I'm actually really enjoying this one. It reminds me of like kind of a, a navy with some shading. I feel like a lot of blue, blue blacks are just like generic dark blue or sometimes even just like normal blue. Um, but I have two blue blacks I actually like now, the Diamine Blue Black and the Cursed Pecky. If you guys saw the video that was featured in, I had a friend that mixed Con Pecky and Takesumi and that turned into like a dark blue with some black sheen. That was very nice. I appreciate that because it's actually blue and black in the same ink as opposed to an ink that's just dark blue. You know what I mean? Like if you just take blue ink and put some black in it to darken it and make it a dark blue, that's so boring. And I understand that blue black is like really popular for, you know, business people who need a nice dark color that's still professional. And I see it recommended all the time, but like, God, I hate it. It sucks. Either use black or use blue. You don't need to call a dark blue, blue black. Just call it like dark blue. <laughs> it's stupid. But this actually feels like blue black. It gets so dark in areas that it's black, but it's still also when you see the blue, it's a nice blue. Same with the Cursed Pecky. It's a nice blue and then you get some black uh, sheen. Wonderful. Love it. Um, this ink isn't nearly as wet as Writer's Blood, but it's also not as dry as the Kaveco cart I was using, which I don't know the name of it. You can see that little bit of hard start. Um, but the Kaveco cart was kind of like a hot pink fuchsia-ish color. So if you know what ink that was, let me know. I haven't looked it up and none of the cartridges are labeled. Again, it's always just that first stroke does a little bit of a hard start and then it's good to go. Let me go ahead and get my um, loop and we'll take a look at the nib together. Oh no, got ink on it. Okay, maybe let's try the small one. It's so hard to do this on camera. There we go. Where is it? So, I mean, that kind of gives you an idea. I did, it looks like I did get the tines mostly aligned. And it looks like there is a slight angle. It looks like it slightly wants me to write with tilted just a little bit. And that does help. So that tells me I either need to get it, uh, I don't wanna say ground, cause that sounds like such a big change, but like maybe like just a little tuned and polished to my writing angle, which is more holding it like the, kind of the proper way that most manufacturers tell you to or try to get you to, you know, if they have like a, a molded grip, this is, kind of the way they want you to hold it. 
Um, so let's see if I, I've just been talking uncapped for a little bit. That is better at that slight angle. So I definitely do think the last person that had this or used it definitely wrote at a turned angle because those tines were so misaligned. Even though it was smooth, I still decided to fix the tines, which did make it less smooth. So that's on me. Um, yeah, it writes a lot better if I turn at that angle. So yeah, I'll try to fix it myself maybe, or just kind of write at that angle. I don't want to write at the angle though, because then that might get me used to writing like that and then messing up my other pens. So I'll probably try to fix it either myself or get someone who knows how to do that properly to do that for me. Um, I think it would just be a matter of making sure the tines are aligned and then taking it to a, a little bit of micro mesh but I've never done like that kind of work on a gold nib. So I would definitely be doing a lot of research before doing that. Um, I don't recommend you do it yourself without any research and don't do it to any pin you don't mind losing. Um, that's all I can say. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video with hopefully a new pin, which you know I'll explain in that video because this is no, no buy November. I'm not buying any pins. So, you know, that's a little complicated when I say I'm not buying any pins and the next video you'll see me with a new pin that I'll be recording in November. So I'll explain that in the next video. It's nothing crazy, um, but it is a nice looking pin. I hope I like the way it writes as well. So I'll see you guys there and thanks for watching.